Greetings. This is uh, going to be part two of You Only Have I Known. Now, some of this material I've covered in the past, so the uh, regular listeners, this is not going to be anything new for now. But I've got to assume that uh, every time I do a study, somebody you know new listens and they haven't listened to you know a couple hundred previous studies, so maybe they don't know this. Now, God created the beasts of the field prior to the sixth day. And I do believe that Adam was created on the sixth day. Some people will argue and say, no, they didn't, that they were created after the se uh, on the eighth day. I don't believe that. And the reason I say that is Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended, ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. All right, so it says, and on, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And then he rested on the seventh day, not because he was tired, but, you know, uh, the seventh day was to be a day of rest. And for the human body, uh, you know, a day to relax, let the body recharge, and it was to be a day of spiritual rest to reflect upon the things of God. So, I believe that on by the end of the sixth day that it was done. Now, when you read Genesis 2, you know, when you get to verse 7, it it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And others, people say, well, this was the eighth day. I don't know that's, you know, for a fact. But, you know, when I went to college, you would have the introduction. The introduction would tell you what the book was all about, you know, or a chapter. Let's say you're studying biology and you're studying about the cells. It's the introduction. Okay, we're going to learn about cell walls and mitosis. And we're going to learn about uh, mitochondria and organelles and all this other wonderful stuff. And we're going to cover blah, blah, blah. And it tells you everything that we're going to cover. Well, then when you go to the chapter, it goes into the details. The introduction is an overview. Then you read what it the introduction tells you that they're going to teach you. When you're doing, uh, doing a speech, they say, you tell the people what you're going to tell them. Then you tell them, and then you close the speech out by telling them what you told them. You know, first you tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you already told them. So you do an introduction, you do the body of the, of the information, and then at the end, you do a summary. So you got the introduction, the teaching, and then the summary. That doesn't mean you did it three different times. You know, and that's how the Bible is. The Bible might give you an introduction, then it'll go into more details, and then it'll sum it all up. And I believe that's what Genesis 2 is. I believe it's just giving you, I think Genesis 1 is the intro, Genesis 2 is the details. You know, but some people say, no, 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 Adam was created on the eighth day after the seventh day he rested. I just, I just don't see it. Because it said, you know, Uh, because it says, And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. I don't know. To me, that means everything was done in the six days. But that's just me. So, so let's assume that's correct. 
that man was made on the sixth day. What's the number of man according to the book of Revelation? What is it? Chapter 13, you know, 666, six, 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 the number of man. Uh, that's what I think anyways. So, I don't see anywhere where, you know, God created man on the eighth day. Now, what is, what is Adam? What, what, what's going on with this thing about Adam? Do you know Adam and the word man are synonymous? That Adam is a racial description? Really? Well, let's take a look. Adam comes from the Hebrew 119. It means to show blood in the face, to be able to blush, to turn rosy, to be dyed or made red, which is ruddy, or to be able to blush. Okay? And the word Laban, as in Jacob's, uh, what was it, his cousin or something, uh, that he took one of Laban's sisters and had for a wife. Uh, the word Laban even means white. So if J Jacob went to J Laban, which means white, and got a daughter, one his, I mean, one of his sisters, and for a, for a wife, you know, what can I tell you? In Revelation 1 and verse 14, uh, his, and that's Jesus, speaking of Jesus, his head and his hairs were white. Hmm, white, like wool. As white as snow. And the black Hebrews will say, well, you know, wool can be black. Well, yeah, it can, but as black as snow? Mm, I don't think so. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Hebrew word 120, Adam, also means ruddy, means white. Now, in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 42, and when the Philistine looked about, let's talk about Goliath. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy, ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And countenance just means complexion. So he was ruddy with a fair complexion. And that's from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You know Webster, the guy that uh, wrote the dictionary? Yeah, there was a guy named Webster, and he wrote the dictionary in 1828. He spent years. Ruddy means having a healthy reddish color, a ruddy complexion. Rosy, to be made red, to blush. You know, a lot of the Irish are ruddy. So if David, King David, who was a descendant of Christ, was a youth ruddy and fair with a fair countenance, uh, what do you think Jesus looked like? Duh! His head and his hairs were white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Song of Solomon 5.10 My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand. Song of Solomon. You know? Lamentations 4.7 Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter, whiter than milk. Hmm. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Do you know why people's bodies are reddish color? How they can be white and yet red? Because white people don't have any pigment in their skin that hides the blood. That's why they can blush and, and be flush and what have you. So, if Adam was the first white man and the Hebrews were white, uh... Where did these other races come from? You know, that's a very, very good question. So why are they trying to flood the USA and Europe with all this third world, non-white immigration? And let's face it, people, who printed the Bibles? Europeans, the Germans, originally. Who built all the churches? Uh, Europeans, okay, wasn't Africa, wasn't Asia, you know. 
So, you know, there's either, there's only two ways to look at things. If, if Adam was white and his descendants were, look like him, um, where did all these dark colors come from? You know, the brown, the black, uh, the Asian, the oriental, the yellow, whatever. Well, I tell you what. Japan teaches that the gods came down from the sky, think about Genesis 6, and intermarried with the women. Every culture in the world has a legend about giants, where the gods came down from the sky. Zeus having fathered Hercules, uh, Odin having fathered Thor, all these were half god, half humans, demigods, as they call them. I mean, every culture in the world. So, where did these other color races come from? Now, a hundred and something years ago, it was pretty much commonly believed among the Christian church that they were the creation of, of the fifth day, that Adam was created on the sixth day. But today, you got people like Kent Hovind and others that teach, well, you know, if Noah was white, and he probably wasn't, he was probably black, uh, but, you know, then he had one white baby and a one yellow baby and a red baby and a brown baby and a black baby, and they just all went all over the world and you know, that's how that works. And that is the common theme for today of what the average church teaches today. Hmm. Now, let's take a look at something. In the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Very interesting. All right, so let's go take a look in the book of Genesis. And I guess we're going to start verse 4. Now, I'm not going to say exactly what I believe, because, you know, honestly, I'm not exactly sure what happened and what happened where and when. There's a lot of things the Bible are silent on. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter 4. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now, this is a very interesting thing. When you read Genesis 3, there are some Bible scholars that, when you read Genesis 3, about what happened in Genesis 3 with the serpent, and it wasn't a talking snake that was hanging from an apple tree, but there are those that believe that Cain was fathered by Satan. Matter of fact, the Luciferians believe that. A lot of them do. And they say that Cain was a superior being over and above Adam. Now, I don't necessarily believe anything a Luciferian teaches, but it's funny that they teach that. And then in the Talmud, the Jewish Talmud, they also teach that Cain was a superior being, having been uh, born of Satan. So, I don't know. Well, uh, let's take a look at something real quick. All right, go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 
Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Now, in the Bible, people, uh, believers are not called sons of God until the New Testament. In the Old Testament, sons of God always refers to angels. And I do an entire playlist study on that, probably 12 to 15 hours, at least until YouTube deletes my channel altogether, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew not, it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? It doesn't say we've always been. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, and we shall see him as he is. See, when, when we're, we're, we're re resurrected, given the new bodies, uh, when Christ comes, and until Christ comes, we're not going to be resurrected. Or if we die, or if we're alive, we're going to get new bodies. We're not going to be able to see him until we have body, spiritual bodies like him. Okay? And the resurrection doesn't happen until the end of the tribulation. There's only two more resurrections. The resurrection of the just. Okay. Sorry about that. But the, the, the resurrection, there's, the Bible says there's only two more resurrections. The one is at the end of the tribulation, and then the, that's for the just, and then the the unjust will be at the end of the thousand-year reign of Christ. There's only two more resurrections. There's not the, the partial one before the tribulation and then another one after the tribulation and then, you know, it's, no, that's not how it works. But we become the sons of God when we're born again the Holy Spirit, and then we're going to get a new body. That's how it is. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And the only way we're pure is from the washing of the water of the word. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil in this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. So are these just spiritual children? Are they physical children? Are they both what? Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. You know, they use the word, the King James Bible used the word of. 
And let's face it, when you're baking bread, what is bread made of? It's made of wheat. It's made of sugar. It's made of yeast or whatever, you know. When you bake a cake, what do you bake a cake of? It's made of flour, sugar, maybe chocolate. That's what cakes are made of. Cakes are not like flour. They don't follow flour. They're made of flour. And this is what, you know, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. It doesn't say he was like the wicked one. It doesn't say he followed the wicked one. It says he was of that wicked one. And if you don't know what the word of means, go to Webster's 1828 Dictionary and look up the word O-F. It's a two-letter word. You should have learned that in elementary school, probably in first grade. The meaning hasn't changed in 400 years since the King James Bible came out. So, you got a problem here. If Cain was of the wicked one, who's the wicked one? Adam or Satan? And if you say Cain was fathered by Adam, well, then Adam's the wicked one. I'm just reporting... You know, I'm just a reporter, basically. Verse 13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Hmm, okay. I always thought that was interesting. Let's go to John, 8th chapter of John, verse 39. Now, they're speaking to, well, let's go to verse 38. Jesus speaking. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? John 8:44. Ye are of your father the devil. Okay. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was a murderer from the beginning? Cain. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. What did the serpent tell Eve in the garden? Ye shall not surely die. That was the first lie told in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 3. So, you know, he that he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Why would Jesus... Why would Jesus say they were of their father, the devil, 
trace it back to the first murderer from the beginning. You know, I always wondered about that. And if you want to read something interesting and you're willing to spend a few weeks on it, look up the two seeds of Genesis 3.15. Very interesting reading, especially when you look up all the words in the Hebrew and in the English. Um, especially when you know what happened in Genesis 6, you know, about the angels that sinned. Um, you know, it's not a salvational thing, but, you know, that's the meat of the Bible. It really is. All right, so let's take a look at something. Genesis chapter 4. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Huh. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now, some people say that uh, this is like uh, Jacob and Esau, that they were like twins, maternal twins, I guess. I don't know. You know, the Bible doesn't give you enough information to really nail down a lot of things. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You know, it's, it's, I found it interesting. I don't know how true it is. I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm not saying I believe it or not, but uh, according to, the, to some of the rabbis, and you got to understand something, the Talmud is not total filth. There's actually some good stuff in the Talmud, but it's sort of like looking for a pearl in a garbage can. You get a lot of filth on you looking for that pearl. But according to the Talmud, there's a devil called sin. Listen to this, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his, his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. I don't know. Just something to think about. Is there a devil called sin? And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is thy Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Do you realize that God cursed the ground for Cain's sake? Was this a curse that only applied to Cain? Or did this curse apply to all of Cain's descendants, to all his offspring? Do you know that there is a group of people today that never, never farm? Never? There's a group of people that will not farm. They never farm. They always have other people do it for them. Find out who that is, and usually they're tied in with money, if you catch my drift. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Is there a group of people that are fugitives and vagabonds that, you know, like gypsies traveled all over the place? didn't have a homeland until recently, maybe 1948, I don't know. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Wow, you just murdered your brother. Instead of hanging your head in shame, you, uh, 
you cry out that your punishment is greater than you can bear. Wow. Cain is still speaking in verse 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Huh. Now that's an interesting verse. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Who's going to slay you? If it was just Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, uh, is Adam going to kill his wife's son? Is Cain's mother going to kill her own son? I mean, think about it. When one son kills the other son, what, are you going to kill your other son and then you don't have any sons at all? Who, who, who is in the earth that would want to slay Cain? Who? Who's he talking about here? Hey, he didn't say, uh, and it shall come to pass that Adam or Eve, if they find me, they'll slay me. No. It says, everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Were there other two-legged creatures before Adam and Eve? I don't know. That's what the churches used to teach 100 years ago before um, all the big Bible publishing companies were bought up. I had a book, one of those books. It was from 1890s. Uh, I don't know. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any, lest any, finding him, should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived. Now, Cain knew his wife. Now, you got to realize, uh, Seth was born of Adam and Eve after Cain killed Abel and Cain took off. So where did Cain get his wife? Was he a daughter that wasn't mentioned of Adam and Eve? Did he have a twin sister? Or, you know, there's there's a lot of ifs. And quite honestly, I don't know. The Bible doesn't give you enough information. But he got a wife from somewhere. Where? Did he get a wife from a pre-existing two-legged creature that wasn't of Adam? I, you know, I, I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. That's not the Enoch of the Bible that the Lord took. And bare Enoch, and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Now, if it's just Cain and his wife and a son, how do you build a city? How do you build a city with just, you know, three, you know, two, a uh, husband and a wife? You wouldn't build a city. You might build a, a, a barn. You might build a house. You might build a uh, couple of, you know, you, you don't call a couple of houses a, a, a city. So who was there to help him build a city? Was there somebody there to help him build a city? I don't know. And if you want to quit, uh, keep reading, you can, and then read about how Cain and his descendants had a bunch of children. And uh, let's see, let's skip down to verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth, for God said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. All right. Uh, give me... Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. 
After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard, as it were, of a trumpet, talking to me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sard sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Hmm. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And, you know, I wonder about these. Uh, I did a thing on the 24 elders. I kind of wonder if they're the, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. Not Judas Iscariot, but Paul. But, you know, Bible doesn't tell you. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. Is that racist? And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders, thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts, beast, B-E-S, B-E-A-S-T-S, -E -S, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So these uh, four beasts have uh, are full of eyes. They got eyes in the front and in the back. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Flying eagle. I'm going to do a, I think my next Bible study is going to be on, on eagles, eagle wings. And the four beasts, each of them, had each of them six wings about him. Now these are obviously angels, okay? But they're called beasts. But they're angels, okay? I mean, there are many different kinds of, well, there's several different kinds of angels that I'm aware of. I could do an entire study on just angelology. Some angels look like men. I mean, let's face it. The, the angels that came to Abraham that went to grab Lot out of Sodom, uh, the Bible says they were men. They look like men. Uh, Abraham made them, you know, food. And they ate with him. I mean, you know. And then you got others that got wings and, you know, a lion, a calf, uh, an eagle, you know. And the four, four beasts each had of them six weeks about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, why did they say holy, holy, holy? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Why holy, holy, holy? Why three times? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, my opinion. People don't like the word Trinity. Well, Trinity is not in the Bible, but Godhead is. And people that don't like the Godhead doctrine of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, they usually end up trying to deny that Jesus was God come in the flesh, Emmanuel. So you got to watch those people. Those are the Christ Adelphians, those are the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, those Oneness Pentecostals, which kind of scares me, people talking in gibberish that I can't understand. You know, that kind of scares me. I mean, I don't know if they're demon-possessed saying in some unknown language that, you know, Christ is, you know, saying things of blasphemy. I, I don't know that. I really don't. I think there are Pentecostals that are truly saved, but, yeah, what can I tell you? Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts, 
beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So, is being a beast an evil thing? No. These, these beasts, these four beasts, are a type of angel, and they rest not day and night, and they give glory and honor to the God that sits on the throne. So, is a beast a bad thing? You know, people give beast a negative connotation. You know, Beauty and the Beast, Disney, you know, Disney's going to ruin everything, right? Well, let's take a look at a few Bible verses about uh, beasts. In Exodus 22, 19, it says, Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. Okay. Is that a four-legged beast? Or was that a two-legged beast formed prior to Adam? Leviticus 18.23, Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereunto. It is confusion. Now what, what animal, what four-legged animal uh, will lie down and have sex with a woman? I, you know, I don't know. Leviticus 20.15, And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. Well, if a man has sex with a sheep, or some four-legged be animal, beast, why are they going to kill the animal? It's not the animal's fault. You know, I, I don't know. Leviticus 20, verse 16, And if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down thereunto, I'm sorry, thereto, Thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Their blood shall be upon them. See, when the Bible says to kill somebody that does something evil, their blood shall be upon them, it means if when you kill somebody like that way, the Bible, the Bible says their death is on their head. You're not guilty of murder. That's basically what that means. Their blood shall be upon them. You know, the Bible says thou shalt not kill, but if, if you find a witch out in the woods um, getting ready to do sacrifice a human baby that she stole from a hospital and getting ready to do sacrifice to a devil and you kill them, their blood's upon their own head. Okay? Saucers and witches were, you know, they were to be put to death for their abominations. Uh said, so their blood shall be upon them. You're not going to be charged with murder in the eyes of God. And if you do that and God charges you with murder, well, you tell them, I take responsibility. Let that sin be upon my head. And I'll, and I'll show him from his own word where this came from. But what kind of, why would, why would, if an animal doesn't know what it's doing, doesn't have a, you know, a conscience, uh, consciousness to do, have sex with a woman, how can their blood be upon them? It's not the animal's fault, right? I, you know, I don't know. It just, you know, you kind of wonder, is this a four-legged animal or a two-legged animal? Isaiah 43, verse 20. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls. Well, the Bible tells you what the dragons are. The dragon, uh, that old serpent, uh, the devil and Satan, that old, you know, the dragon, the great red dragon. So are, is this a figure of speech? I don't know. The figures that Bohemian Grove, that they have a giant statue of an owl, the beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. And who's the chosen? Israel. Jeremiah 31, 27. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow 
the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. Hmm. Okay. Ezekiel 29, 11. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast. Nor foot of beast. Now, if you think the Bible's just saying foot of beast, no. The Bible says hooves. Hooves. You want to read hooves of animals, read the book of Leviticus. Read it. It says hooves. Especially when it's talking about unclean animals. Divide the hooves. So how can a beast have a foot? No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited 40 years. Okay. Now here's a really, really, really interesting verse. Book of Jonah, chapter 3 and verse 7. Jonah had preached repentance to Nineveh, which was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. They were the ones that took northern Israel into captivity. Jonah 3, 7. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, cry mightily to God, turn from their evil way and violence that is in their hands? Huh? How can a beast be covered with sackcloth? How can a beast cry mightily unto God? How can a beast turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands? Hmm. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 10. For behold these days... There was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast. How do you hire a beast? Are you going to give them silver coins? How do you hire a beast? For behold, these days there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men, every one, against his neighbors. And that was Zechariah 8, verse 10. So, uh, so, when you read in the, I, I forget what day it was, in the creation, but Adam was created on the sixth day, my opinion, and on the probably third, fourth, or fifth day, I think the fifth day, God created the beast of the field. So if Adam was white, and the Hebrews were white, where did all these dark-colored races come from? I don't know. Did Noah have different colored children? Or did they exist prior to Adam? See, in Amos it said, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Amos 3, 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Speaking of Israel. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So, what can I tell you, people? I don't know I don't know. But there's a lot of unanswered questions. So, all right, well, if I get another 
community strike. They give you, YouTube gives you four chances. I only got three left. If I get another one, uh, I will, the next video I do, I will tell you my new website and I'm going to bail on YouTube. I'm not going to delete my channel, but I'll bail. I will find another way and because uh, people keep telling me that they're unsubscribed for me and they didn't do it. And uh, looks, I, I don't even get, my old listeners don't even talk to me anymore. So, I, you know, I don't know what's going on. But this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.